Welcome to ESPN on ABC College Football, presented by K Jewelers. Today from Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan, the eighth-ranked Michigan State Spartans and this sellout crowd all fired up for the 107th meeting in this great in-state rivalry as Sparty plays host to the Michigan Wolverines. So Michigan State will receive the opening kickoff as Matt Weil kicks off for the Wolverines. The important stat in this rivalry throughout the years. Cook with time, lofts one, caught by Tony Lippett, the leading receiver in the Big Ten. Wolverine showing blitz. They rush five, well picked up. Another wobbler, but an open receiver is Keith Mumphrey. And he's down at the 21-yard line of Michigan, tackled by Raymond Taylor. Cook kept it. Chris told you the coaches wanted more out of Cook in the run game, and now it's Delano Hill. And Cook pushing and shoving after the whistle and flags thrown. They're averaging 47 points per game. And the big reason why their success at this end of the field in the red zone. The Langford bowls his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan State. Sacks per game, their third behind only Utah and Washington. He rushed only four, and the throw is incomplete. More than 75,000 jammed in here. Devin Gardner lost the football. It's free on the ground. Looked like Twan Jones might have had it for a moment, or Ed Davis. One of the Spartans came up with it. Fry stuck around long enough to see it. But it's more of the same for Michigan. They're the worst team in the country in turnover margin. Now minus 14. During the week, doesn't matter what level of football you are playing, turnover margin is a key to winning and losing. It's a big reason why this team is losing. McGarrett King's first down. And the coaches talk, they use the word dominant to describe his play at left tackle. The best offensive lineman they've had here in a long time. Helping lead the way for Jeremy Langford. He is a 17-point favorite against Michigan. It's the most Michigan State's ever been favored by in his rivalry. Norfleet dumped immediately by Curtis Drummond. The veteran safety senior came flying up to drop that play for a loss. Two tight ends in the game for the Wolverines. Flea flicker. Gardner had to avoid the rush and cannot spin away. Sacked back at the 46-yard line led by Twan Jones. Gardner out of the gun. Screen does not work. Ed Davis drops Hayes for a loss back to the 45. They call him Slippery Ed in the Spartan locker room. Nick Hill remains the running back. He's seen more playing time in recent weeks. They're trying to limit the wear and tear on Langford. They thought he carried the ball too often last year on the way to the Big Ten title. That's just a little tip that the Michigan defense could pick up on. Cook lofts one to the near sideline and it is caught with a flag down by Aaron Burbridge. If it stands, it's a first down. Evan Gardner on first and ten from his own 34. Is smothered. Shalik Calhoun on the outstanding defensive end. Leading the way. Hasn't gone that way. Crowd making it difficult. For Devin Gardner and the Wolverines who got the snap with one second to go. Under duress again, throw it away. And perhaps was fortunate that it fell incomplete. They had only forced one opponent's fumble all season long before today, and they didn't recover it. Great field position at the Spartan 31, and again, nothing on first down. They're averaging negative yardage on their eight first down plays so far today. Michigan trailing 7 to nothing at the Michigan State 31. Time for Gardner this time, and it is intended for Funches and broken up by Darian Hicks. These two guys that embrace the rivalry, especially Mark D'Antonio. The rivalry is in his blood. This is his words, not mine. 
Langford looked like he was stacked up. Found some running room and went off and running into Michigan territory to the 49-yard line, a 24-yard game. Fourth play of 20 yards or more for the Spartans. Now ahead by only four, under three minutes to go in the half. One timeout left for Michigan State. Tony Lippett dances down to the 40-yard line. They've sent a lot of good players, particularly to Michigan State over the years, including Drew Stanton, Mark Dell. Punches went to Michigan. A.J. Tripp cutting across the middle. 13-yard gain on the pass to Tripp. Now they set up a screen. Langford weaving his way through the traffic and down at the seven-yard line in the arms of Jordan Lewis. Power formation. Andrew Gleichert, the motion man. Langford to the goal line. Touchdown. Coach Hope telling everybody, reminding anybody, it's a four-quarter game. Hold them up the fingers. Let them know we're still in it. We might have to remind them what a touchdown is <laughs> when they play Michigan State. We have to be able to protect, to give him time to dissect. Blitz comes. They picked it up, and Funch just can't hang on with Curtis Drummond in coverage. He's not helping them win. He's a senior. You're three and four. You already made the decision once early in the year to go to Shane Morris. It seemed one advantage Gardner would have is in the run game, but he's not running the ball himself to help them gain yardage, and he's not being particularly elusive of the rush, even though to his defense, it's been hard to avoid the rush because they've come after him with great vigor. Third down and 11. And he throws an interception through a floater right to R.J. Williamson. Touchdown, Michigan State. On a 29-yard return. Defensive score in the eight seasons under Mark D'Antonio, the second this season. R.J. Williamson, the junior from Dayton, Ohio. The Michigan fans in disbelief, but they've seen this before. Michigan is a turnover machine. They entered today's game having won only four of their last 13 games. And they're looking at another loss unless something turns dramatically with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Gardner deep again in the single coverage, and Darbo broke it up. Jay Wings had the better position as he was eyeing another interception. Some of the voters as well. On second and ten, Hayes run down by Juan Jones for a big loss back inside the 30. Anytime you pull linemen, you, you have to be able to account for blitzers. Well, when you talk to Mark D'Antonio, it's very obvious that since he's been the head coach, this rivalry is very personal. Sometimes you get your little brother excited when you're playing basketball and stuff, you let him get the lead, and then you just come back and take it back. Do you think of Michigan State as your little brother? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but just remember, pride comes before the fall. So they want to mock us all they want to mock us. I'm telling them, it's not over. So they can print all that crap all they want all over their locker room. It's not over. It'll never be over here. We'll be a coach here for a long time. It's not over. It's just starting. It's just starting. Mm. And that intensity has never wavered when he talks about this rivalry. Look at the catch. They say he was in bounds the entire way. Touchdown, Michigan State. 70 yards from Connor Cook. together and a quarterback and receiver do a little lanyap, a little extra. 
you're able to recognize and read each other's minds. This is a back shoulder throw. Lippitt knows it's going to be a back shoulder throw because of the position of the defensive back. And that comes not from the practice field in September and October. That comes from the practice field in the middle of summer when nobody else is doing anything. Beautiful. Five of the nine assistants on this staff have been with D'Antonio for all eight years. Another reason for their success. Guarding in the end zone. Do they finally have a touchdown? No. Bunches. Again, couldn't hang on. Fourth and five. Punches goes in motion. Gardner's 0 for his last five passing. They bring a blitz after him. He steps up, runs for the yardage to make, and I'm not sure he got there. Got a helicopter around by R.J. Williamson. Looked like he was going to make it with ease. But they stopped him right on that five-yard line. A little bit short of it, in fact, and this is going to be a very close. No, it's not even a measurement. But Garbos had some balls he could have held on to and didn't. Funches certainly has. Canteen, the freshman, needs to make that catch. Shovel pass right to the Spartans. Intercepted by Juan Jones. <laughs> and the question, was it a catch by Jones? Well, there's just a, still a little bit of panic in the pocket, trying to throw it away. But against this defense... I think that's a catch. Yeah. Against this defense, who never quits, who always runs to the football, they never stop, they're relentless, you can't just throw it away. That's just a panic throw. He had control of the ball. That's well, stand. Michigan State lining up quickly, and it's obvious enough to Jim Kemmerling, he's not going to stop the ball. Delton Williams is in now at the running back. Third different featured back of the day. And you can see it right here. They're up in press coverage. Hayes dumped for a loss by Ed Davis. Hall of Fame running back Thurman Thomas. Gardner's pass batted away by Twan Jones, intended for A.J. Williams. I think he can become a very good NFL quarterback one day. Well, he left Langford in there. At least Spartan fans want another score. Jared Wilson dragged him down. 27-yard yep. run for Langford. I love the fact that Michigan State, it's not their job to stop Michigan State. Langford, he's going to get to the goal line and into the end zone. And the crowd that remains goes crazy. It's personal. Yeah. I was just going to say that. When Mark D'Antonio says it's personal, there was clearly a statement behind that last touchdown. No, it's not his job to stop Michigan State. It's Michigan's job to stop Michigan State. And you can add all, anything you want to it, but he's sending a message to his team, and that's his personality, and his team grabs onto that personality. The extra points good by Michael Geiger. And on the Michigan side, Chris, many believe that Brady Hoke's future really is no longer in doubt that it's a foregone conclusion that this will be his last season. A lot of the speculation was if he had really any kind of a chance to survive, he needed a win today. And not only was it not a win, Chris, it's more of the same. I mean, it's, a, it's not a good football team right now. They're four and 10 in their last 14 games. Look, he's a good man. He's a good football coach. The problem is he understands it's a bottom line business. If you're at Michigan, you have to win. And they're not winning. Okay. That's simple. He won in remarkable fashion at Ball State and San Diego State, but it's not happening at the school he loves so much. Michigan drops to three and five overall. They'll need to win three of their last four just to become bowl eligible. And they still have a game with Ohio State on their schedule. Here's Todd with Mark D'Antonio, a winner in this rivalry for the sixth time in the last seven years. 
Well, Coach, obviously it was a team win. Jeremy Lang for 35 carries, 177 yards. How about his performance? Outstanding performance, big run at the end, obviously, but, uh, you know, we just uh, we were able to, able to run the ball as the game went on, and, you know, that's a positive thing for us. We've now won six of seven against Michigan. How big is this win for this program? Big win, you know, obviously a huge win for us. Uh, you really can't understate it for us. Uh, just happy for our football team, very proud of our football team in terms of how hard we play. How are you feeling right now, Coach? I feel good. All right. I feel real good. Enjoy it. I don't Thanks. look it, maybe, but I feel real good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Here you go, guys. Well, that qualifies as a smile from Coach D'Antonio. <laughs> and they get the Paul Bunyan Trophy, a tradition that dates back to 1953. Four foot high statue of Paul Bunyan, state of Michigan, underneath his feet. And again, the team with the rushing edge wins again for the 42nd time in the last 45 years. 35 to 11, the final score. Sparty victorious. Tune in to ABC tonight. More great action. Ohio State, in state college to take on Penn State. For Chris Todd and our crew, Sean McDonough, so long from East Lansing.